a lot of discussion about the Pusik, this Vayigash, this coming week's parsha. The Yeso, Yosef, Merkavto, he, Yosef himself uh, organized, put together his, uh, his chariot, Vayal, and he went down, he went up um, to meet his father, Yisrael, Goshna to Goshna, Vayarilov, and Vayeiroilov, and he appeared to him, Vayipal at Zavorov, Vayevchal Zavorov, Od. He fell on his, uh, on his neck. The Rashi learns that Yosef was crying. Yosef was crying. Vayev al Saborov Od and cried much, very much. The Ramban seems to indicate that it was Yaakov that was crying. Though Chazal say that Yaakov was saying Kriyashma. He was saying Kriyashma and the, he wasn't crying. Ramban assumes that a father meeting a son after such a long period of separation and the sequence of events that uh, all the, the upheavals and turmoil and suffering that uh, they had both been through is that the elderly father would cry more than the young son who now has so much going for him and his life in front of him. The principle, the uh, it's hard to uh, deserves an uh, understanding why, what, how does Kriyashma fit in at this moment? The uh, Sora Mor has a long list of, uh, of Shotim on the Sula Mutzavalza, the when Yaakov has the dream and, uh, earlier on, that the ladder that was embedded in the ground and peaked the top in, in the heavens and the Malachim going up and down, the whole series of Shotim over there that the Tzor Amor has, but he connects it to, to the idea of Kriya Shema. And he seems to indicate that it's the, somehow the code, the secret, all of the interaction between earth and heavens is, implied, alluded to in that relationship of that sulam, that ladder that stretches from earth to, to heaven. And that Kriyashma encompasses this all. Kriyashma somehow is the sod the secret of the chibur, the connection between earth and heaven, between past and future, that it brings all the, it's achtos, it's the oneness of everything becomes, it's the apotheosis of the, the capitalization in condensing the, the totality of, me, myself, my life in the context of earth and heaven, implying the connection between body and soul, which is clearly there in the Sulam and that ladder. So one way of getting, getting a handle on the uh, uh, the Ramban uh, 
is that the Tzoramor has a problem with the Ramban, that the the crying of of seeming to uh, delete the uh, the Chazal that uh, where where this fits in the Kriyashma with Yaakov being the one that was crying. Much to talk there, but let's take one 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 approach right now. Is that the Mephoshim also talk about the Rebbeinu Shalom appearing to Yaakov b'maro slayla in the in a, in the evening in the darkness. Darkness is Golas says the. Meshe Chochma and others, but the Meshe Chochma develops the uniqueness of this Navua that Yaakov is being given a Navua which is preparing him and Maisa Ovasim Labonim, the achievements, breakthroughs, uh, accomplishments of the patriarchs are going to be a symbol, uh, open up pathways open up all of the keys to Jewish history will be there, implied, alluded to, connected to, achieved through these breakthroughs of the patriarchs of the Ovos, and then in turn will allow for Klad Yisrael, Am Yisrael being able to survive in Golis and in history. Shema Yisrael, Rashi brings on the Shema Yisrael that the Shema Yisrael, Hashem Elokeinu, the Rebbe Hashem is our God now. But ultimately it's going to be the, the recognized by the, by the non-Jewish world as well. It'll be Hashem Echod. Today it's Elokeinu and ultimately it'll be Hashem Echod. Let's take another Another implication there. The Chidor says that when a Jew says, recite Shema Yisrael, the words Shema Yisrael are as if he, every Jew, when he is articulating those words, Shema Yisrael, it is as if he is facing Klai Yisrael and making this declaration. What declaration? Hashem Elokeinu Hashem Echod. The Rebbeinu Hashem, the Rebbeinu of Mercy, Elokeinu, the Rebbeinu of Din, how he manifests himself in the world. Hashem Achod, it's all one. It's, it's all Hashem. But now, as history is unraveling, we don't necessarily see the chesed, the kindness, we don't see the mercy in what seems to be the Midas Hadin. That will only happen later. That will happen at the denouement, the unraveling, the climax of history. Hashem Echod. It will turn out to be Hashem Echod. Perhaps that is the, it is, this is the key, as the Tzor HaMor indicates, that Yaakov understood this. Yaakov was now connecting it to the all of the suffering, the frustration, the pain that he had lived through, that Yosef lived through, and that it is a preparation and leading up to a sense of the oneness and the climax ultimately, which will happen in history when Am Yisrael succeeds in making the ultimate Gilui revelation being the vehicle for declaring the oneness of the Rebbe Nishalim. The Chidor's insight and idea that when we say Shema Yisrael, it's as if the 
the Jew is addressing Klal Yisrael, my understanding of that is that many people feel a sense of connection to Am Yisrael that even before they, they yet feel and appreciate the oneness, the sweep of Jewish history, past, present, and future. Even before they understand the oneness of the Bria and the Kodesh Baruch Hu's Achtus, they have a sense because there's a certain tangibility. There's an intuitive sense that a human being has of his, of his tzibur, of his family. And Am Yisrael has been invested with this sense as being an, an extended family. And as we have said, and others have pointed out so many times, that overcoming, never succumbing to the dispersion and all of the vicissitudes of dispersion, that somehow transcending it all, clad yourself, is, we have that sense. And you find it amongst Jews that are not yet from, that's my definition of a secular Jew, a Jew who's not yet a Shomer Mitzvah. He was hopefully a candidate at some point to take the tangibility of this instinct, this intuitive sense of the oneness of Kaisal, despite dispersion, despite Golos, despite the suffering and frustration, there's a, a sense that many Jews still carry with them. That's the, the last residual vestige of, of connection to Kali Yisrael. But that can be, that connection and loyalty and allegiance can be the key to appreciating that the oneness of the of the Bailey. So what seems to be, at certain times, we connected it with the Meshech Chochmah, the extraordinary piece of the Meshech Chochmah, where he talks about the, the, the oneness of, of a Kodesh Baruch Hu as uh, in history, as being something that we first experience through our senses and that's present tense, that's now, and the now is most dramatically alive for a human being who interacts with the world through his senses, and he picks up his data through his senses, and the, the, that sense of connection to the Bria present, past once was present, once had the experiential empirical dimension and future is a projection. And we talked about it Rosh Hashanah time when he connected this to the, to the experience of uh, the Shafras the and the, the, how it all comes together in the moment of transcending of time in the sound of the shofar, but when we approach, when we approach the declaration of Shema Yisrael, where, like the Chidor says, it's me sensing the unity within the diversity, Klai Yisrael, but that should be the opening for me to sense the unity within the diversity of all, of everythingness, of a Kodesh Baruch Hu, of history. Perhaps that is what is being alluded to, that there was a, that by Chazal, is that Yaakov was reading Krishna, this moment of ultimate frustration, but the, strangely enough, the Torah Mor says, this recognition of 
the oneness of it all in implied, stated, what we have to connect to when we declare Shema Yisrael, that the past sometimes it's Hashem. Sometimes we see the manifestation in terms of Rachmanus. Sometimes it's Elokeinu, it's Midas Hadin, like in Choben Bayes Rishon, Choben Bayes Sheni, Bechulul, and all of the suffering in the Holocaust. Ultimately, we'll see that there was a there was a Shem there, and it was somehow necessary for the collective entity, this oneness of Klal Yisrael, to go through this. Yaakov was preparing us for this and understood that his relationship and suffering and Yosef's being in Mitzrayim was a preparation for Klal Yisrael going through all of these goals. And now, if it comes together, says the Tzorah Amor, then it's a moment of simcha. It's a moment of supreme simcha, because simcha is a kind of shleimus, is a kind of completeness, it's a perfection. Maral uses the lotion that shleimus leads to simcha, simcha leads to shleimus, it's being able not to ignore suffering and not, not in a moment of denial, but understanding what we don't understand had a purpose and had a significance and that at times in history, it's Hashem, at times in history, we experience the manifestation. The Rebbe Hashem evinces himself, shows himself in history as such as Elokeinu, ultimately it'll all be revealed as a Echod. When the Meshem Chochmet talks about this idea of the Maros Laila, that this was in, he emphasizes that Nevoa, generally speaking, uh, the, the emphasis is that it's in daytime, he connects it to the Tfila of Lachura, our Tfila should be, begin, Abram initiates Shachris, Yitzchak Mincha, and Yaakov Mairuv. But the day begins with the night, why don't we start with Mairuv? Our day halachically begins with the night, because the it's the the ikka kabonis have to be in the day. The haktola, the burning of the of the pedorim and the agorim can extend into the night, and that the ikka is to like Chazal the quote the Moran Brochus, that someone who can succeed in connecting the Geula to Trilla is Besimcha, is Besimcha. Why? Because he's, he's understanding that there was a necessary component to having lived through the moment before the Geula, before the redemption as well. And so, the Meshe Chochma connects this idea of the night and day, Golas and Morgili of the, of the Hashkocha and Klayasel's role. He connects it with Yecheskel Anovi, that the he had Navua in Chutzlot, but one doesn't have Navua in Chutzlot. Navua should be by day, shouldn't be in Chutzlot, but it was on Al Kfar. He began in El Yisrael, and therefore he ex can extend it when he goes to 
He can stretch it to Chutzlovitz. Similarly, says the Meshach Chochma, that somebody, a Jew, who is connected to our history, to connect it to the total mission of Klai Yisrael throughout, he's part of that history, then he can then put the personal anxieties, disappointments, frustration, adversity that he experiences within the context of his total life and of his place within the totality of the Jewish experience. And somebody who is connected to history, to the Dirlis, it's like having experienced Navua in El Tisol first and then extending it to, to Golos. Similarly, the Jew that lived through a whatever challenges he is living through at the present moment, emotionally, psychologically, most impactful, but he can put it in the context of history, <coughs> then he can interpret it. He can find it within the, place it within a context of the totality of the, of the drama of, of Claudia so. And so, Yaakov is reciting Kriya Shema. It's putting the entirety together. The Ramban, when the Ramban talks about the, there's a, there's a crying possible way to understand of Yaakov's crying. And yet together with the Chazal, I would submit that, that it's not a stira. It's not a contradiction. It's that his, his, he is still, oh, he's still crying that, that if it's a reference to him, then, the, but he's putting it in the context of Shema Yisrael, Yisrael, says the Ramban, is, is Yaakov. And it's the, as we'll see in the following week's parasha, that the Shvotim placated Yaakov, that though each one has his own path, each one has his own personality and his own area of stress and excellence in Aveda, in serving Hashem, that all Shema Yisrael, listen Yisrael, Hashem Elokeinu, Hashem Echot, it's all, there's a oneness, it's a oneness that encompasses the totality. Oneness, the, the extraordinary oneness is that oneness which encompasses more diversity, it embraces it, it includes it. That's the, the moment of the, but it doesn't mean denial of the, of the pain at the moment of pain, but it means putting it in context. We're going to have in the uh, uh, Mishpotim, the Din of Machteris, Din of Machteris, that uh, a homeowner who now has a sneak thief, a burglar coming in to steal from him, is permitted to take a preemptory strike. But if it's clear that the thief will not be violent, then the homeowner loses that permit to take a preemptory strike. When is that classically true? When it's a father stealing from a son. And Chazal established that a father cannot kill a son and therefore the homeowner, the son, loses his license to take the, the initiative. To, of course, the father will never be violent with him. Sons can kill fathers. Fathers cannot kill sons, says the halacha, generally speaking. We have a Kabbalah, uh, that the 
this emanates from the source being the creation of the first man. Odom Rishon is Yitzir Kapov of HaKadosh Boh, who is the handiwork of the Rebani Shlalem. He did not have a biological father, but he did have a biological son, and therefore in the, it is built into the DNA of humankind, the love of father to son. Son to father has to be taught, has to be learned. It's not, it's not built in. Yaakov is crying more and can establish the connection to put it in the context of the totality of everything of past. He's connecting us to the past, connecting this to his experience, to Avram, Yitzchok himself, and projecting it forward for linking it to, as the Gemara Bocha says, he's linking the, the moment of Geula, of redemption, to Tfila, to prayer. That prayer, including the total, total, his battles, the nullification of uh, meanness as being independent of the context of the totality of what I'm here for. Yes, a sense of meanness. If I'm only for myself, if I am not, if I don't have a sense of self-awareness and a sense of consciousness and that the Rebani Shalom has given me what to bring to the, to, to the brew. Yes, if I have that, then I can make a declaration of my consciousness as being a gift from the Rebani Shalom as all other gifts that my very existence and everything that's included in that existence. And so, Rambandik, Yaakov can be crying more. And yet he's placing it in the context of the totality of the Jewish experience, which is how reciting Kriyashma. How is reciting Kriyashma? Because it's like the Chido said, it's my moment of facing, experiencing, internalizing the unity, the sense of oneness, that even in the diversity of the bodies, separate bodies of Kadiaso, but yet putting it in the context of taking it to the source of it all, the oneness of the Beirei in that recitation of Shema. Shema Yisrael, Hashem Elokeinu, what we experience at different times, chesed, rachamim, mercy, kindness, kindness, mercy, yet, do I see it now? Do I feel it now? No. At the moment, today, personally, of course I do. But sometimes people are overwhelmed. I don't necessarily feel it. But if I postpone judgment, which is a sense of the limitation of my view, I don't, I don't, I have to be able to see the mokum, the, the omnipresence of a Kodesh Bohu, merochok from the distance as Avram did, and I have to be able to connect it with Maras Laila at night in Nuvua, which will allow me to initiate the thriller of Mairav, that's what Yaakov did, to put it in, connect it, to link it to the total Jewish experience that 
Avrom, Shachris, Boker, in the morning, clarity, light, and seeing the Rebbeinu Shalom's obvious chesed, Mincha, Yitzhak, it's already beginning to become dim, twilight, and Yaakov wrestling with the Malach, uh, Ace of preparing us for Golos, initiating Mairev, and crying for empathizing with all of the pain of Kladyasel throughout history and anticipating it, but understanding and translating it into the language of Simcha, because it's all part of the oneness of the total Jewish experience. Connecting us to history, the Mara Slayla. And that Jew who is connected to history sees any moment of challenge, frustration, adversity within the context of the uniqueness of the prat of the individual within the context of the cloud. Shem Yitain, that the, we should soon see the, the end of this chapter. These, these days of suffering of COVID, simultaneously seeing Nisim and Eflois, extraordinary chesed that the vaccine, yet much quicker than anticipated. Challenges, frustrations, disappointments, but so many individual Jews who have transcended what seemed to be the limitations of their particularity to give of themselves and for the connect themselves to the cloud today, which is ultimately saying, essentially saying, I'm connected to Jewish history and the message that we represent as a nation marching through history. Shem Yiten, that it should be Yeshua sort of force for all of Kaya for the world at large. Call to.